Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. This is Raj from Radical Neckart, your process automation strategist. In this video, we will explore a powerful tool that turns a pH measurement into a real time action, and that is pH controllers. If you are dealing with chemical dosing, effluent treatment, or taro plant neutralization, a pH controller can help you to automate, simplify, and protect your process. First, let's start with what is pH controller. So, what exactly is pH controller? A pH controller is receives the pH signal typically in the form of sensor or a transmitter and then makes the decision based on a present range or set point. It automatically turns dosing pumps on or off, open or close on the rain valves, trigger alarms or shut down if pH goes out of the range. Unlike a transmitter that just sends the data, a controller actually controls the process. Now, let's cover where it's used. You will commonly find pH controllers in first ETP or STP plant for automatic acid or alkali dosing. Second is RO systems to protect membrane from extreme pH. And third is boiler and cooling towers to maintain pH for corrosion control. And fourth is chemical mixing tanks for batch process monitoring. And fifth is food and beverage industry. For CIP and fermentation pH control, they can be panel mounted, fill mounted, or even built into a all-in-one sensor unit. Now let's cover key features and outputs. Let's talk about what makes a good pH controller. That pH controller includes standard features like side point configuration, like upper and lower pH limits, Second, relay outputs to control pumps, valves, and buzzers. Third, digital display showing real-time pH reading. Fourth, control modes like on or off, proportional or PID. And last is output options like 420 mA Molbus or RS485, PLC or SCADA. Your quick tip is always check if the controller has manual override mode, useful during maintenance or calibration. Now let's cover wiring and installation and integration part. Wiring a pH controller typically involves sensor input, direct electrode or transmitter output. Second is relay output to dosing pump or solenoid valve. Third is power supply, usually 230 volt AC or 24 volt DC. Optional communication port if you want SCADA or BMS locking. Some controllers also offer dual controller channels for acid and alkali dosing from single unit. Now, always ensure proper grounding and cable shielding for stable readings. To wrap it up all, a pH controller closes the loop between monitoring and action. It helps you to automate chemical dosing, protect equipment, and improve process stability. If you have a dosing system in your plant, drop your setup in the comment section. We will help you to choose right pH controller for your application. So if you like this video, thank you so much for watching. See you all in my next video of connectivity sensors and transmitters.